Hey everyone, and happy Halloween. So on this channel, we've talked about a lot of different ways that stories can be told. Notably through analog horror, creepypasta, internet blogs, and video games. But for Halloween, I wanted to find something that is a little bit different. Something that can tell a compelling horror narrative in a way that is unique. But for Halloween, I wanted it to be a story that is still enjoyable. Something that is just the right amount of cheesy and over the top, while also still remaining somewhat eerie and dark. And that has led me to what we are talking about today, the story of Begotten. And no, this isn't Begotten like that weird movie I'm sure most of you have seen. This is Begotten, a musical artist on Bandcamp. Now for a quick introduction for those that don't know, Bandcamp is a lot like SoundCloud or any other music platform in which artists can independently put up their own music, as well as like sell merch and do those type of things on it. I'm, I doubt very many of my subscribers know this because I've never said it aloud, but I've been involved in music my whole life. I've played in a bunch of really bad punk bands and whatnot through all of like high school and most of college. So I am no stranger to Bandcamp. A few of my bands have put stuff out on there. It's embarrassing. I will not be leaving a link to it, um, but it exists. So needless to say, I've used Bandcamp to find new artists that I enjoy, and there is one record label I found on there that I enjoy a lot, even though they're different from any type of music I typically listen to. And this would be the record label of Geometric Lullaby. Now this record label is mostly host to Vaporwave music, which I will be the first to admit I am not all that familiar with. So if any of my terminology in relation to the genre of music in particular is off through this video, I'm so sorry. But regardless, I followed this page and I've really enjoyed a lot of the music they've put out. I've bought physical copies of some of it. And even though it's not music I typically listen to, it's really good for me to have on in like the background while I was like studying for tests and whatnot back in the day. Or if I'm doing chores or something around the house, it's just kind of a nice genre of music to have on in the background. It's pretty chill, has some cool beats and whatnot. And I am so out of my element talking about this, it hurts, uh, but I would recommend it. Regardless, Geometric Lullaby is the main source of today's story. Now, I first heard about Geometric Lullaby and through that begotten the story in question today through a YouTuber called Pad Jennington, who also has a video on the subject. He makes really good videos overall, but if you want to check this story out in a way that pertains more to the music itself as well as telling the story, I would recommend checking out his video. There will be a link in the description and it's really good. I'd recommend checking it out regardless. He definitely is much more knowledgeable on this genre of music than I am. So like I said, if you're into that side of it, I'll definitely go check that out instead. But he's basically the one that turned me onto the story in the first place. And this is one of the stories I wanted to cover since I started my channel. I have like a little notes app in my phone full of just ideas. And pretty well before I even started this channel, um, this one was on there. So I've kind of just been waiting for the right time to cover it. And I think Halloween is a great time. Like I said before, it's intriguing enough to keep me engaged throughout the whole story. And for me, I just thought it would be a great video to talk about this Halloween. Now, I do want to throw out a really big disclaimer here. This story deals heavily with self-harm. Now, of course, we don't see any. Um, we don't explicitly hear that anyone's done anything. But it is presented through poetry and through some of the music. So while it is done through art forms such as poetry and whatnot, it still gets a little graphic at points. I won't talk about the things that are too bad. I'll skip over those for the sake of this video. Uh, but there is still mentions of self-harm and whatnot, so everyone just be aware of that. So I just wanted to warn everyone here before we dive into the video. But without further ado, let's dive into the story of Begotten. Begotten is a story that unfolds through six albums. Now, the story itself isn't necessarily present in the albums themselves, although they certainly do encapsulate some of the themes as the story progresses, but actually in the description of the albums themselves. Now, the story of Begotten actually follows a man named Dennis. Now, Dennis is the founder of the record label Geometric Lullaby, and this takes place relatively early in Geometric Lullaby's lifetime, as he is trying to get people to sign on to the label, you know, give it exposure, and basically build it up to what it is. In the final days of fall, I created a thread on a Vaporwave forum in efforts to find new artists for my label Geometric Lullaby. As quickly as it was created, it was closed. I received quite a few responses, but one in particular stood out among the rest. I immediately deleted the post after that. An email from someone claiming to be from Azerbaijan, a small country just north of Iran, 
caught my eye for a few reasons. It seemed the artists had already set up their own band camp with all of the covers and album names, each without the actual music, only the text that I received from their description. The first reason this all caught my eye is that I was sent six full albums, all at once, each linked with the initial email. Secondly, the imagery and the music videos. Each of the albums had paired with it multiple music videos. These videos were eerie, haunting, dreamy, and still somehow beautiful. How this artist managed to make them so relaxing, but still put me on edge, baffles me to this day. Third, the text sent with the emails was so bizarre, I just didn't know what to make of it. Each album had the title listed and track names and a block of Chinese text. I'm still unable to understand the meaning of this text or the reasons for the Chinese language if they are truly from Azerbaijan. Some of it translates to almost a sad note, while other parts sound like a story that I can't quite piece together, but also included with some of the most heart-wrenching poetry that I've ever read. A lot of them are hard to read. They sound like someone who is in a dark place in their life. All of this intrigued me without hearing any of the albums in full. But that was when I got excited. The last reason, and more importantly, was the music itself. Take away all of the imagery, the poetry, and the bizarre song titles, and you still will find an amazing collection of albums. So Dennis mentions that there are several music videos to go alongside the songs of Begotten. Unfortunately, most of these have since been privated, some of them were thankfully re-uploaded by other users, which I will try and use when I can, but for the most part, most of the music videos seem to be gone to time, at least as far as I can find. So I'll do my best to sprinkle in the footage that I could find throughout this video when appropriate, but I apologize that I don't believe I was able to find all of them. So Dennis is sent these six albums, which all seem to be done already. This artist was just sitting on six completed albums with music videos, poetry, blocks of Chinese text, cover arts, and, and everything basically done that had just never been released to the world until Geometric Lullaby came along. Now, this is rather unusual, but Dennis figures he needs to actually sit down and listen to all six of these albums, and he describes the music as being very beautiful, atmospheric, covered in thick layers of reverb to really let it resonate with the viewer, literally. So Dennis sits down, listens to the six albums, and then enjoys them so much he actually goes back and listens to all six immediately again. So Dennis tries to get back in touch with Begotten and tells them he wants to be the one to release this and put it on his label, proposing ideas for what they can do with it and whatnot. But he doesn't hear a thing from Begotten until randomly one day, three months later, he finally receives a response. And all it says is, please release, send me address. And sure enough, once Dennis sends them the address, he receives a package in the mail from Azerbaijan full of 25 J cards for the cassettes, all of which the artist has signed death on the front, which is interesting. And then Dennis gets everything ready to be released. Now, after all of this, Dennis isn't sure that he'll ever hear from Begotten again. After all, it took him three months to hear from him initially after Begotten was the first one to reach out to him, but he has a label to run. He can't think too much of it, so he gets the release ready and releases it to the world. And this first album of Begotten is titled Life Cycle. Now, about a year ago, this album actually went on sale again on the Geometric Lullaby Bandcamp page, and I was actually able to pick up a vinyl press of it, so I've got it here. I've listened to it many times. I like it a lot. And the tracks on this album are titled Longing, Love, Birth, Life, Sickness, Desperation, Depression, Suffering, and then there are two bonus tracks included on this as well. Now, the poem that accompanies this album is as follows. If love is a gift, then I am luckier than most. I am showered with more than anyone could hope. Only I cannot accept them with open arms or a smile. I push everyone away from me, never-ending denial. It hurts to exist. It is my pain to live. My wrists show the struggle of my emptiness. Just once I want to express myself right. To be honest to those who deserve so and cry. To bleed my own blood, not for me, not my life, but someone who needs it. Just once before I die, no more lies. And when I am gone from this life, I look down in surprise. The world keeps on turning, not a cloud in the sky. Without me, it's better and less filled with hate. Because now I am gone, buried deep in a grave. Lay me down and close my eyes. Send me off into the night. So yeah, like was stated earlier, 
the contents of all of the poetry and the text are relatively dark, and clearly Begotten is going through a very troubled time and a rough mental state. But this isn't the only text that accompanies the album. There is a big chunk of text in Chinese as well. Now, I don't speak Chinese, so I had to run it through Google Translate, and I'm not sure how good a translation it is. So if anyone actually does speak Chinese and can, like, say what it says, that'd be great. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to have to go with what Google Translate says. So if it's a little rough, I apologize. And the first blocks of Chinese text says the following. I really want to kill myself because no one needs me here. No one wants me here. No one cares. I have no online or offline friends. I don't love my family. No one understands me. I was a failure and just a waste of money, food, and more I could list. So I'm in this traveling choir, but it's summer, but there's winter-like weather. The tourist location is kind of terrible as I've stayed there, about 3,000 people, full of drug addicts. I remember walking to a Wendy's location, none of which I stayed at, but the sign celebrated veterans like a veterans bar. I walked in, and I had no money, and I had no friends, but an older lady said, oh, I don't care, you're going to get ice cream on such a beautiful day. And then I got hit by the man in my choir. The sound pulled away, and I was completely lost in what felt like a dreamlike blur of colors and buildings. The reason I'm talking about winter weather is because it rained during the ghost segment at the end of the previous section, and I used my body to shield my stuff from getting wet in the rain. Even though the trip lasted a few hours, I think, don't remember details about the trip and didn't see my teacher or any classmates other than the tenor and baritone. I finally got the unfair one, on a street I knew well. I had an idea in my head. I was going to visit my friend's house in the city, the only friend whose house I'd ever been to, and sleep with him. So when I got to his house, I ran like Naruto for 30 minutes instead of taking the bus. I got to his house, and he was really different. It makes sense, I thought. In the three and a half years we were apart, I discovered a sense of humor, and he had a sore foot and was obsessed with otters. But wait, there's more. I went into his house, and he didn't have a dog like last time, but he had five siblings than before. What I remember is that I asked where his parents were, and his dad said, Oh, Skylar found out how to turn himself into an otter, so he had some me time in the bathroom, which was very sad for him. And I could hear very, very loud bathroom moans. I woke up in a sweat, whispering that I wanted to die. Okay, I think Google Translate did me dirty on that one. But I, I, I think that was a dream that Begotten had had. Maybe, because I don't, I don't think anyone actually turned themselves into an otter. I don't, don't think that's possible. But that's pretty well it for everything in the description of Life Cycle. So by this point... Dennis creates this record label. An artist gets in touch with them who basically submits six albums all at once um, and is very hard to get in touch with. Attached to each album, they have a poem, which is very sad, and a chunk of text, which I think is supposed to be sad, but again, I don't... That was a weird read. And Dennis isn't sure if he'll be able to get in touch with them, but feels that there's something wrong with this individual. Clearly, their mental state is not in the best place. But Dennis finds the music they make to be a perfect fit for his label. It's eerie, beautiful, haunting, and is exactly what Dennis was looking for. So, we have one album down, five more to go. This time, the album is titled Hush Wave, and the tracks on it are as follows. Vast, Insomnia, Pain, Invincible, Heartfelt, Ghost, Eternal, hidden, and then once again there's a bonus track. Now by the time this album comes out, Dennis has been trying very hard to get in touch with Begotten again, to let him know that the release of his first album went super well, and that he's excited to work with him again for the release of Hush Wave, this album the follow-up. But much to Dennis's dismay, he could not get in touch with them. It was as though they had fallen off the face of the earth. That is until just three weeks before this album was set to go live. Dennis receives a letter in the mail. The envelope was in a beige color, in lieu of the traditional white, and the address, both sending and returning, was printed from what seemed to be a typewriter. It felt heavy to be only a letter. I had no idea who it was from, as the sender's name was typed as B-D-W, and the address was from somewhere in the middle of Georgia, the state, not the country. Now, Dennis says, of course, 
He's not going to give away the address as he doesn't, you know, want to dox someone, but that he feels this address has significance. And as the story will play out later, it certainly does. I went back into my apartment and opened the envelope, curious, but thinking nothing of it. But what was inside sent shivers down my spine, another envelope. This one was badly damaged. The addresses were written in red ink and the return address, Baku, Azerbaijan. I nearly dropped the envelope, I was so excited. I carefully cut it open, using a knife. My hands were shaking. Inside there was a single card, thicker than paper. It read, You're invited, in big cursive letters, like something you would get at a Hallmark. Below, there looked to be a fingerprint in red ink, or possibly blood. An address was given, again, in Georgia. At the bottom, scribbled hastily, was the word, begotten. And that was it. No date, no details on what I was being invited to. Now immediately after reading this letter, Dennis goes to his computer and begins googling the address that was found on it. And when he does, he sees that it leads to a mental institution in the state of Georgia. He says the building looked old and decrepit, like time had worn it down significantly. But, according to Google, it was still active. So next he looks up the address that was next to the Your Invited card and sees that it leads to a cemetery, once again located in the state of Georgia. So with this weird turn of events, Dennis sits down and begins thinking about what all of this could mean and he comes up with a few possible solutions. The first of which is that Dennis is being pranked, that all of this is just a hoax, just a publicity, and that someone is just messing with him. The second is that someone decided to prank him following the first release, basically knowing that Hushwave is set to release soon, so they decide to mess with him and pretend to be Begotten. The third is that Begotten really is located in Georgia, perhaps even in that mental institution, and is saying that they are from Azerbaijan as somewhat of a decoy or a red herring to throw Dennis off for whatever reason. And the fourth and final option that Dennis considers is that Begotten is from Azerbaijan and currently lives there, but for whatever reason is using someone from Georgia as somewhat of a middleman between Dennis and Begotten. But none of these options really make Dennis feel great. He begins wondering if he should have the fingerprint on the letter sent to check if it's blood or red ink or what it is, but ultimately he kind of just decides to do nothing about it and just kind of move on, but the mystery of it all bobbing around in the back of his head. As for the album itself, it's a good bit eerier this time. The music is more haunting, which is a word that will probably be used to describe a lot of Begotten's music if we're being honest but it is the most fitting here in particular. It's certainly one of the creepier entries of Begotten, while also still remaining pleasant to hear, something rather pretty and beautiful being behind the wall of creepiness. And maybe it's just creepy because like I know the story, but regardless, that's the vibe it kind of gives off. And this is the poem that accompanies this album. A step too far and I find my way, falling to my knees because the emptiness remains. The lights are so bright, I must close my eyes. I indulge once more, as tears fall, and she cries. Life is a burden I cannot bear. The barrel of a gun, a blank-eyed stare. Razor blade on the mantle, a cup full of pills. I tried everything once, but nothing fulfills. Scars on my arms, self-mutilation perhaps. I could get out of bed now, but rather take another nap. Scared to death of death itself, and nowhere to turn. I hope I find solace before it's too late to learn. And once again, I would assume this is a fault of Google Translate, um, but I don't know how this ties in to anything at all. But here is the Chinese text. This is done by applying the principles of physics and meteorology to predict weather. Weather forecasts predict atmospheric phenomena and changes on the Earth's surface caused by atmospheric conditions, snow and ice cover, storms, floods, etc. Scientific weather forecasting relies on empirical and statistical techniques such as measurements of temperature, humidity, atmospheric pressure, wind speed, and direction, and precipitation, as well as computer-controlled mathematical models. What does that have to do with anything? I'd assume that's Google Translate leading me astray, but considering the whole chunk of text seems to be about the weather, I don't know. It'd be different if just like one or two words were different. But as far as I know, he wanted to talk about the weather. Please, if you can read Chinese, tell me what it says. Because I, 
I hope this isn't right. I really do. I hope this would like contribute to the story. And maybe it doesn't, I'm just an idiot, but I don't see what the weather has to do with anything, but moving on. The next chapter in the Begotten story is from the album Phantom Psalms. Now the tracks in this album are Disintegrate, Calming, Sagittarius, Red, Palpable, Neurotic, Unknown, Eloquent, and then once again, there are two bonus tracks. Now this one, I feel Dennis describes perfectly, so I will let his words tell this part of the story completely. This really strikes me as the low points of this artist's life. Not low as in quality, but low as in rock bottom depression. If Hush Wave was the light and airy, even vaporous release, then this is the heavy, slow moving, hulking counterpart. They are the sounds of a mad person, someone who has gone off the deep end. From the onset of the very first track, my heart felt like it had weight pressing into it. Like sleep paralysis, I was terrified and yet my body completely relaxed. And that sums it up pretty well perfectly. This album, this album sounds as though someone hit rock bottom, that they are as low as they can go and their only way to express it is through music. The poem that accompanies this one says, A ghost is being sent to remind, a creature of memory, outside of space and time. It returns with a vengeance, won't leave me alone. Just as happiness finds me, my honesty is blown. Another year will I last, a decade or two. Every day is a curse, but somehow I get through. A friend is a pawn, a lover the same. Another piece of my life, just a game. I'll lose soon enough, I'll fail to the rest. Inside I have lost, I've failed the test. I deserve to disappear and be forgotten at last. Now this time, the Chinese text seems to be religious in some way, reading the following. 1. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but because of your love and faithfulness, which is the glory. 2. Why do nations say, where is their God? 3. Our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. 4. But their idols were silver and gold, made with human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, and eyes but cannot see. They have ears but not hearing and noses but not smelling. They have hands but can't feel their feet, but they can't walk or make sounds with their throats. It's been going numerically, and then somehow we just skip straight from four to eight, but whatever. Eight, those who made them are like them, and so are everyone who trusts in them. Nine, you, all Israelites, believe in the Lord. He is their help and shield. Ten, house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. 11. Those who fear him believe in the Lord. He is their help and shield. 12. The Lord remembers us to bless us, and he will bless the house of Aaron, and he will protect those who fear the Lord, both the young and the great. The Lord raises you up on the 14th of May, both you and your children. 15. Blessed be the Lord, creator of heaven and earth. 16. The highest heaven belongs to the Lord and belongs to the earth which he gave to mankind. It is not the silent or the dead who praise the Lord. 18. We preach the Lord now and forever praise the Lord. So the first text seemed to be about some dream that Begotten had had, where someone turns into an otter. The second one seemed to be about the weather. And the third text is religious. So I'm not sure what's going on. Now back to real life. Dennis has been kind of struggling with what to do about the information. He has once again tried to get in touch with Begotten time and time again, and yet has failed to get a response. But he knows he has a friend who lives in Georgia. Now, Dennis is unable to make it to Georgia. He lives several states away and doesn't want to, you know, head there just to check out some weird thing that could potentially be a prank on behalf of someone either pretending to be Begotten or Begotten themselves to check out that mental institute or the graveyard. So he calls his friend and asks if he can investigate this for him. And so this friend goes to the locations and FaceTimes Dennis so that way he can watch in real time what is going on. When they FaceTimed me, they were in the middle of a beautiful graveyard. I could see the stones and trees in the background. They informed me that they couldn't find anything of interest, but I asked them to look just a little bit longer since they had already gone through all that trouble. I knew there had to be something, anything there. My friend was alone and the connection wasn't the greatest, but they agreed. As the sun began to set, they walked along every line of headstones 
and showed me everything they could see. I watched from my office, focused and just wishing I could have made the trip myself. He kept telling me it's just a graveyard man, whoever it was was probably just messing with you. But I didn't want to believe it. Just keep going, walk through the whole thing, I told him. And so he did so. I wished I had just one more email or anything to help explain the letter and what it meant. But I had nothing to go off of. My friend had reached the last rows of gravestones, and we'd found absolutely nothing. When he turned the camera to leave, I spotted something. What was that? I yelled, nearly spilling my drink. I don't see anything. I... No, on the road. Behind him. On the only road path that led into the cemetery was an all-black car. I swear it hadn't been there before, and it wasn't my friend's. His face fell from a joking and light expression to fear. He hadn't noticed that car before either. I'm not going anywhere near that, he told me. I begged him to talk to them, to maybe knock on the window or at least wave, but he refused. The car didn't move and the windows were tinted so dark that it was impossible to see if anyone was inside. By luck, the connection started to downgrade and the picture became blurry. The black of the car smudged the screen mixed with greens and grays painting the screen with its bad connection. Next, the audio cut in and out. I only got one more flash of something distinguishable before it completely disconnected. I couldn't tell if my friend was smiling or screaming. The still frame left me anxious and worried. I tried calling over the next few days and it seemed that his phone was off or had no connection. The next week, I called and was horrified to find that his number had been disconnected completely. His Facebook deleted and any form of contact erased as far as I could tell. I called the police station after that and gave them all the information I had. Not three days later, I get a call. It's my friend. He acts as if nothing had happened, as if he had checked out the graveyard and there was nothing there. I asked about his phone, his time away, and his Facebook, but he brushes it all off as in my head. He said he'd been busy, that there must have been a problem with his provider, and that he had gotten tired of Facebook, so he deleted it for a while. At this point, I didn't know what to think. I knew the only other place... I could get a clue from was the place that the envelope I had received, the mental institution. I mentioned the possibility of my friend going to check that place out as well, but he said he was busy. He hasn't contacted me since. I plan to figure out more on the mental institution from which the letter I received was addressed, and of course I will be checking my email, waiting for contact of any kind. So like that's probably bad. So Dennis sends his friend to go check this place out. Already sketchy enough, the connection starts cutting out as soon as they see the suspicious black car, and the last thing Dennis sees is either his friend screaming or smiling before he doesn't hear from him for a while. They delete any presence of themselves online and only get in touch with him after he gets in touch with the police. So, I'll, I'll admit, this is where the story somewhat loses me. It's, it's this part in particular where I'm like, the story's fake. Right, like I mean, I can't say for 100% certainty, because um, I've never found anyone like admitting that it's not real. But um, though it is a very fun, very good story that I I enjoy, this is what I meant at the beginning when I say it's it's a little campy and, and far fetched at points, which leads me to believe that it's not real. However, the story of Begotten persists nonetheless. The next album released by Begotten is Happy Anniversary, and it is a major change of pace from the other albums. The tracks on it are Amethyst. Emerald, Quartz, Celestine, Fluorite, Malachite, Lapis Lazuli, Silicon, Aquamarine, Diamond, and then this time there are four whole bonus tracks. This album is actually, at least in terms of Beyond's other releases, far more upbeat and happy. It sounds as though the individual that is begotten, this person who is very clearly heavily depressed and in an awful state, is getting better. And even the poem this time seems to be about love instead of, you know, very negative thoughts. Reading, what a happy anniversary, what a joyous span of time, what a wonderful evening with your hand in mine. You tell me everything that you want to say, you let it all out, put it all on display. I can't say a word, my mind goes blank. I want to shed tears, say words, give thanks. So happy anniversary from me to you. You'll never understand, they never do. And the Chinese text that accompanies it this time says, It's easy to fall in love. 
but it's harder to stay in love with the same person for the rest of your life. Even if a year has passed, the love you share continues. Sending my best wishes that you will continue to be blessed with love and happiness. Throughout the ages, many people search, but never find a love like the one you two have. May you always be blessed with great love and happiness. Happy anniversary. Be proud and know that you have the kind of love that everyone desires and will one day find. May your heart always remain as caring and passionate as love. Happy anniversary. So it seems as though Begotten is doing better, at least mentally. They're writing poetry about love, and the songs are more upbeat this time around. Maybe in the time between writing the first three albums and this fourth album, they had gotten better. They had found something to lift their spirits and their outlook on life and begin healing somewhat. However, since Dennis can't get in touch with Begotten, he can't really confirm this, but he does have a plan. See, Dennis shares that he plays in a band, one that is actually going on tour. And on this tour, they will be in Georgia, passing the very town that the mental institution is located, the one that Begotten had mentioned in the letter and given the address to. So Dennis is excited. He clears with his band that they'll be cool to kind of make a quick pit stop along the way and then go check it out. However, things would not work out quite as well for Dennis. It's as though his whole quest had been cursed, as the areas they were touring down south were hit by a hurricane, and then before they could kind of redirect and head to Georgia, their engine broke down, which cost them thousands of dollars to fix. So realizing they couldn't keep spending money on this tour, they basically just had to go home and cut their losses, with Dennis never being able to get to the bottom of what was going on at that mental institution and how it relates to Begotten or his friend's I don't want to say disappearance, but like weird interaction and what any of this means. So there he is, stuck with two more albums to release and a mystery still on his mind. However, all hope was not yet lost as Dennis finally received an email from Begotten. It read simply, thank you. I am still alive. I am okay for now. However, Dennis didn't want to respond right away. Communication was scarce between him and Begotten. After all, he hadn't heard from him since the Hush Wave release with the envelope. So he wanted to take the time, think of what he wanted to say to make sure that it got seen and read and hopefully would get a response from Begotten himself. So he sat back and took time to think about what he wanted to say as he released Happy Anniversary to the world. Forgive and Forget is the next album by Begotten with the tracks on this one being Unprepared, Unraveling, Understanding, Unfortunate, Unending, Unconditional, Undeserving, Unless, and then a bonus track, all of the songs obviously starting with Un. Interesting. And Dennis describes this one as being the most melodic and romantic of the albums, which I'd agree with, even though I don't know what's being said in most of the songs, as most of the samples for the vocals in this one are taken from other languages that aren't English. I only speak English, so I can't comment on what they say. But regardless, I do agree with this album sounding far more romantic than some of the others have. Um, even Happy Anniversary, as though that album does seem to be in response to love, um, it's more happy, whereas this one is more romantic, if that makes any sense. The poem for this one reads as follows. Can I recognize feelings? Can I sense that they're there? has all gone to numbness in a place of despair. I can ask for forgiveness, but I know it will never come. I can wait until you forget, but there's no ridding of what's been done. Maybe you'll forgive me when my neck is hung. So whereas in Happy Anniversary, Begotten seem to be doing better here in Forgive and Forget, it seems as though that's not the case. Perhaps the romance and love that they had in that album has ended or something negative has come about it at least. And now as we see through that, the negative thoughts are back as a prominent force in Begotten's mind. The Chinese text with this one also says the following. Rawls says that you imagine yourself in an original position behind a veil of ignorance. Behind this veil, you have no idea of yourself and your natural abilities or your place in society. You know nothing about your gender, race, nationality, or personal taste. Some believe that if such a concept were implemented both now and in the past, it could have a huge impact. To return to the example of slavery, if slave owners were forced to imagine through a veil of ignorance 
that they might be slaves, then suddenly slavery may no longer be justified. Maybe with no war to fight, the entire practice will be scrapped. A more typical example would be if everyone in society treated themselves as a fact that they were probably the most disadvantaged members of society. In this case, freedom and equality might coexist in the way that many philosophers ideally would. Now, where we last left Dennis, he had finally received a response from Begotten themselves. It'd been so long since he had heard from them that he wanted to take time to think about what he wanted to say. And in that email, Begotten had said thank you in response to Dennis treating his albums with respect and releasing them out into the world. And Dennis thanks Begotten as well, saying that he is an incredible artist and that the world is loving his music. And ultimately, Begotten should be proud of what they've achieved. And this actually opens up a proper discourse between the two of them through email. Dennis doesn't get to know specifics about Begotten necessarily, but Begotten does share more details about the severity of their mental illness. And Dennis says he was a psychology major, so he's understanding most of what Begotten's saying pretty well. But something, like most things involving this artist, seemed odd. The more emails I received, the more confident I was that I was not actually speaking with Begotten directly. It was as if I was messaging someone who spoke for them. A caretaker, perhaps. They spoke as though they'd studied the human psyche in depth and really knew the deepest feelings of Begotten. But it just wasn't them. Now around the time this conversation is going on between the two, Dennis is once again on tour with his band, this time in Europe. So he says his Wi-Fi connection is spotty, and since, you know, he's touring all around the continent, he doesn't really have much time to respond to Begotten. But during all of this, he's trying to think of a way to ask Begotten if it's truly them or someone speaking on their behalf. And when he finally does, the response he gets isn't great. So much so that I don't think it'd be very advertiser-friendly to read this one. This video is already not doing great in that department. But basically, the response he gets is another bit of Chinese text that says how they're going to end it all. Attached is a video that just says me. Yeah, so sorry about that, uh, but I probably can't share that one. Um, it's a little worse than the other text blobs we've received so far, so... Yeah, so Begotten's not doing good, that's for sure. And that pretty well ends the conversation between the two for a time which leads us with one last album for Dennis to release on Geometric Lullaby on Begotten's behalf, New Aura. The tracks on this one are Interpersonal Eden, Sensuous, Dilapidated, Kinetic, Distill, Perpetual Love, Intrepid, Voluptuous Wires, Serendipity, Connectivity, Cavernous, Persistent Glass, and then two bonus tracks once again. This is the poem that goes alongside this one. A void is all that's left, no sanity to be found. I've lost my mind in the process, I can't distinguish any sounds. When there's nothing to live for, and you are truly at your last, you hate yourself thoroughly, solely dwell on the past. A new you starts emerging, something different, something clean, something desperate for anything other than a dream. But dreams are what I have, they beckon me with demand. Let's hope my dreams never come true, for if they do, you'll know exactly who I am. And then one last bit of text for this one. Without immortality technology, I will die within the next 35 years, he lamented. Death is inevitable, at least for now because, as we age, the cells that make up our bodies lose the ability to repair themselves, leading us vulnerable to cardiovascular disease and other age-related conditions in about two-thirds of cases. The ultimate goal of my program is to transform someone's personality into a completely new institution. Well, then you can say that such a person is visionary, but not angry, because that would mean that what you're thinking of is impossible, which is not the case. A couple weeks after the release of the last album, Dennis received another email from Begotten that said, Do you really want to know who I am? Now, initially, Dennis is mad at this question. Of course he wants to know who Begotten is. After all the strange occurrences that had happened since he encountered this artist in the first place, he felt like he deserved to know who Begotten was. And yet, once again, he wanted to take time to think of his answer. He wanted to make sure that he articulated his words to say exactly what he meant. 
I took a few days to consider this. I knew I shouldn't rush it. Whoever Begotten was, they had trusted me with their expression. They had trusted me with their art. Would it be disrespectful to say that yes, in fact, I really wanted to know who they were? These things weighed heavily on my mind and I started to feel anxious about the entire situation. I stopped eating. I started sleeping longer each day and I began to have vivid dreams. It was impossible to tell how connected or not all of this was to Begotten. In the end, after countless hours of balancing options in my head, like placing coins on the plates of a scale, I had come to a decision. I opened up my email with confidence and hit reply. In the body of the email, I simply wrote, You are begotten, and that is all that matters to me. Thank you for trusting me. I hit send and smiled, and then I played the entire discography from beginning to end, closing my eyes, allowing it to take me away. Now, while not a great ending, it's kind of a nice sentiment to sit and be like, okay, you're who you are. It doesn't matter to me who that is. You trusted me with everything. I don't need to know who you are. Until you remember that Dennis's friend, like, something happened to them in that graveyard, one way or the other. Something probably bad, considering they basically cut themselves off from the rest of the world. I'd want to know who did that, why they did that, what the heck their deal is, why they're inviting them to cemeteries and mental institutions, if that's actually the case. That'd just be for my own curiosity, but like, what's the deal? I'd want to know. Now, as I said earlier, 99% certain this story is fake, and it's a fun story. Um, I do enjoy it for as cheesy and over the top as it gets at some points, and I thought that was the end of the story. It was for years. I'd listened to all these albums. I'd read the story before, seen videos on it. And so at the start of this month, I emailed Geometrical by myself asking for permission to cover the story on my channel here. And the response I got basically said, yes, you're free to cover it, but just a heads up, keep a lookout for Friday. I think I emailed them on Monday or something like that. So I was like, okay, they're probably re-releasing Begotten's music. It's October. I got a physical copy of their music when they released it last October. I figured it was that, but I was mistaken. And sure enough, that Friday rolls around and I'm scrolling through Bandcamp and I see that Geometric Lullaby has a new release. And it isn't just a re-release. It is a new album from Begotten. I was already about to begin work on this video and then they just drop a whole new chapter of the story onto me like it's a hot potato. The new album is titled Death Cycle, in sharp contrast to Begotten's first album, Life Cycle. This time, there are 20 whole tracks on this, reading the following. Drowned, Fascination, Scattered, Vision, Poltergeist, Whispers, Weeping, Ribcage, Intestines, Boiling, Ceremonious, Solemn, Tearfall, Decayed, Incendiary, Moonlight, Marrow, Slithering, rotting vengeance and this new chapter of begotten goes as follows i am begotten i laughed and shook my head this wasn't the first time someone joked with me at a show about begotten people would bring up the project every now and then to me most of the time it's fine but this night i was already a bit annoyed by the way the show went sure i said with a chuckle so you know my label then i can prove it they said and they held up their phone it's been a long time since the infamous Begotten sent me six full albums at once. Over five years ago, I received my first email from this individual, and the rest is history. With how busy I am, I had almost forgotten about Begotten entirely. Maybe forgotten isn't the right word, but they slowly slipped from my mind, replaced by countless emails, music making, touring, and other projects I'm involved with like Global Chill. My band hit the road once more in the US and Canada, and it was going amazing. We were playing packed and sold out rooms, having the time of our lives. That was until we hit Georgia. The staff who were supposed to be taking care of the show were extremely late. The venue was strange and the stage was tiny and barely anyone showed up. This happens from time to time. You can ask any band and they would likely have stories of terrible shows such as this. So we played our set and I was feeling super bummed out. I stepped outside to cool off for a bit and mingle with my bandmates and fans. Not long after, someone reached their hand out to me. I enjoyed your music. I shook their hand. Thank you. They looked at me for a moment too long. Something about the way they stared at me began to creep me out. I nodded at them and smiled, hoping they would move along. They leaned in close to me. I'm begotten. Sure, I said. 
That's when they held up their phone showing me their email. It looked legit enough, and I started to get nervous for some reason. Even then, I had my doubts. Hold on. I opened my own phone and sent an email to the same address that had contacted me all those years ago. And sure enough, it showed up in their inbox, right then and there. It was begotten. I didn't know how I should react. I offered to buy them a drink and they obliged. Luckily, the place had some semi-private seating with large wooden walls surrounding booths, and we took a seat. The conversation that ensued began with a lot of questions from me, but mostly, I was in awe. This was the last thing I expected to happen, and despite the poor quality of the show, my mood flipped on its head. I was ecstatic. I'm not one to share private conversations with the public. Yes, at one point we took a picture together. Though Begotten did not want to be shown to the public, I told them I would not show their face to anyone. This is that photo. And this would have been the happy ending we all wanted. Begotten alive and well. Good conversation, but oh no. There's more. A lot more. Something came up that rubbed me the wrong way. Begotten continually mentioned a group of individuals that they had been speaking with. At first, I dismissed it mentally. It was nothing of note. The more Begotten spoke of them, though, the more concerning it became. They were described as a collective of some sorts, a mysterious number of artists and philosophers who created music. It wasn't until the mention of a manifesto and a set of rules and commandments that I started to take note. Begotten had supposedly met them online through the contact point on their Bandcamp page. Begotten spoke of them so highly, they seemed extremely excited as they were going to meet in real life for the first time in October. I didn't have much time to explore this topic. I was being badgered by my bandmates to come help tear down the stage and load up the trailer. I won't reveal the name of the group that I thought resembled a cult in many ways. I don't know enough about them yet and I don't want to misrepresent them or give them unneeded attention. Before I could bid my farewell, Begun offered me this album, Death Cycle. Apparently they had been sitting on it for a while now, created when they were in a very dark place, something I can relate to with my own art and creation process. We hammered out the details fairly quickly. I hadn't even listened to it yet, but I knew it would be phenomenal. I was so happy. A swing of moods from depressed to ecstatic in such a short period of time. The burst of energy would surely help me in loading all of our equipment out of the venue. Thanks for coming to meet me, I told them before standing up. Begotten looked at me with a strange intensity. They reached out with a crumbled piece of lined paper, placing it in my hand, and stared at me for one last, long moment, and then walked away. I left the secluded table where he'd been sitting, and unraveled the crinkled paper. Help me, was written in blue pen. My heart sank. I ran to where Begotten had walked, but they were nowhere to be found. I sprinted to the parking lot, my eyes shooting all directions. Begotten, I called out. No. They disappeared. Two of my bandmates lugged a speaker cabinet out from the door beside me. Can we get some help here? They had no clue the significance of everything that had just transpired. I was at a loss for what to do. I didn't know whether to make a search party or call someone for help. All I knew was that I had to do something. And believe me, I managed to do it. But that's a story for another day. And so, all these years later, Begotten has returned Seemingly as a part of a cult, though it looks unwillingly. As for the album itself, I've only been able to listen to it twice since I started work on this video. But, I mean, it sounds like a Begotten album. It's still really good. They mentioned that it's, like, really dark. I don't think it's the darkest Begotten album, honestly. But I do think it is still a welcome addition to the albums. As for the story itself, I prefer to ending after New Aura. But I am still excited to see where it goes. And this album, like the others, has a poem and block of Chinese text as well. The poem reads, Take her swiftly to the grave. Make it sudden and tragic, painful and decisive. Fulfill your ill-fated purpose. A glimpse of sapphic beauty. Pure love and affectionate folly. Gliding clouds tiptoe vision. Piercing scream within. Gore-splattered photographs. Intestine affections. Feminine puzzle pieces. Foul urine scattered remnants, dull life exit, unanswered emotion, gathered mourning fools, black spills from their gaping mouths, satisfied, lively, peaceful, blissful ignorance. And all this time, I'm thinking of ways to go. Now once again, I'm sorry. 
I cannot read the text on this one and post it to YouTube with any chance of being monetized. Um, but it's basically them saying, once again, how they're thinking of ending things nearly every day um, and seem to have taken an addiction to alcohol and drugs to try and combat it, but it's just making things worse. Typical begotten stuff. But for now, that's where the story ends. Like I said, I preferred it when it ended at New Aura as far as the story is concerned. But I am excited to see where the story goes. And the new album, just as that, as an album of, with music, uh, it's pretty good. I enjoy it. It falls right in with the other Begotten releases, so I'd recommend it. Now, I, I've said it a few times throughout this video. I don't believe the story is real, right? It's, it's a lot of fun. I don't know if fun's the right word. It's very entertaining, um, and I, I enjoyed it thoroughly while, while going through it. It's a fun way to tell a story, too, just in the description of Bandcamp. Like, I'd imagine there are people that have just listened to these albums and just had no idea there's some strange story going on just on the, like, read more button at the bottom for the description. It's a real interesting way to tell a story, and because of that, I wanted to share it here for Halloween. And I, I want to take a moment to thank Dennis and Geometric Lullaby and, and everyone involved for letting me cover this story. I know I kind of poked fun at the story, but really, I, I love it. I love the music. I think it's all very well done, and I think it fits perfectly to talk about Halloween here. If you guys want to check out more from Geometric Lullaby, I would recommend doing so. There will be a link to their Bandcamp in the description. It's one of my favorite labels I've found, and like I said, it's not even really the music I'm that into, but I've loved almost everything I've found on that label, so I definitely, definitely recommend checking it out. But yeah, that's pretty well going to do it for this video. Um, I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. Again, thanks again to Geometric Lullaby and Dennis and Begotten and all the people involved for letting me talk about this. I, I truly appreciate it. If you want more from me this Halloween season um, and have already seen my other videos, I am actually doing a collaboration with Soul Carney. I believe it'll be out by the time this video comes out. Um, I will drop a link to it in the description. Uh, we're talking about Halloween nostalgia over on his channel. And um, you can see personally what I think of when I think of Halloween nostalgia over there. So link in the description. Um, he makes videos like I do, but better. So they're really good. I like them a lot. I would recommend his Vita Carnus videos in particular. I mentioned that in his video, but still really good. He covers them super well uh, and was the first person to turn me on to that series, which is also really good. So go check that out. If you haven't, uh, go like and subscribe to Soul Carney. I like his videos a lot. With it being Halloween though, everyone, look at me. Come here. Be safe. Make decent choices. I can't talk too much because I'm literally hitting cut on this video and then going to a Halloween party. But make sure everyone's safe. You know, don't drink and drive, especially. Make good choices, but make sure you have fun too. Just be safe while having fun. I mean it. But yeah, that is all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll have a video that's a bit more like normal for my channel coming out after this because I know this video was pretty different. And I feel like I've been saying that a lot recently. I promise we'll kind of get back into the normal Jaybird content. I just wanted to change things up a little bit for October since we do the rest of that stuff year round. You know, let's figured we could branch out a little bit this time of year. So just wanted to uh, thank you all so much for all the support uh, and everything. And yeah, just thanks a lot, guys. Happy Halloween. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day.